wonder why do you have another piece of plywood here? 3 8 inch marine Santa Clara. Well, it's kind of dark, sorry for the lighting, but we're under the tarpaulin and it's not good lighting. We are going to add a second layer of plywood to this because this only has one layer of 3 8 inch. And we're going to add a second so it's 3 4 inch, just like these two guys here. And then we're going to add our three... Uh, uh, ribs on the bottom to kind of protect the bottom of the hole from you, you know dragging on the sand and stuff it should drag on that first so we're going to slide it in here I've notched it measured it and we've cut it all and hopefully we got it right and we're about to find out if we got it right yeah so so that should be good to go we're going to slide it in under the bar right here here we go sliding this is it angle it yeah so we gotta slide it back and slide back yeah. flip it over do you want to flip it they still need to adjust there in the board. Honey, flip it. Flip it. Flip it. Flip it. Flip it. Yeah, flip it and see if that helps. Yeah. I cannot try to flip it. Let's see if that works. How's that one? Better? How about, is there a place we need to notch? Yeah, over there. Need to shave a, a little bit? Yeah, we all the way up to the front. Okay, about a half an inch from pencil. Okay. There, pencil. Okay, so we got to trim some right here because it's a little bit short. But we did get it square. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Next one right here to there. We're marking from right here. We need to. I need to shave up to the tip about a quarter inch. I'll just do a straight line, quarter inch up to the tip there, so it fits. And then the rest of it's okay. Yes, it's okay. Close enough. And it notches in the notches, and everything's good. Yeah. See, I plotted all of this. What I did, I took and, of course, notched where these two boards are. I, Apply those, but then I went to this first rib and measured across to here and plotted and drew a center line on the plywood and then, and, and then centered the distance between here and here and the same on each rib and just plod did the width all the way down but I couldn't really plot down there because I couldn't reach under there and there's no more ribs to measure to so that's why I got that one off slightly so that's about it so we're almost perfect so we will uh, be back I'm gonna I'm gonna trim that front part up there and we'll be back with more for my paradise on the Italian island doubling up on the hull and you need to do this because this is a diesel engine and we got to beef all this stuff up because they shake a lot more and they'll crack uh, all the the wood and epoxy over time so you really got to beef up a diesel uh, that's why uh, diesels work good in the Costco because they're like a tree hull and that thing ain't shaking or cracking ever is that going to push down okay honey it'll go down okay huh is it going to push down when they nay I nail it there, yeah, and, yeah, and form yeah, yeah. that yeah, and the glue is going to be good uh -huh. okay okay we're good the plywood's flexible and we're good to when they start to nail it down okay and so we'll be back with more in my paradise <laughs> and in thailand <laughs> island we're doubling up on the hole bye for now just wanted to show you what we did for doubling the hole putting another layer of three eighths in the bottom we notched all of this out and fit it in there it's not uh, nailed or epoxy jet and it goes up to here this is the engine mount but all that's going to change when we put the diesel in also this uh, propeller shaft is going to change because the angle will change because the diesel engines are a little higher so this will actually come up and we'll have to redo these mounts and the exit going out out the back but we cut all these with a little wiggle room there and that is what it looks like so we did a pretty good job 
so far now they got epoxy and nail it in and then once they do that we're going to put the the chines on the bottom the three ribs you know to keep it uh, uh, from being wishy-washy in, in uh, side currents and uh, side waves and stuff so anyway we got her got her done this is a drain plug by the way here oh most boats have these uh, but this little piece of whatever this is, foam or cork or flip-flop or so something actually goes in this hole right there. And that's your drain plug for when you get your boat out of the water. You can pull that out. And it's tied on here, so they're smart. They tie these on, <laughs> so you don't lose your drain plug. So anyway, we will be back with more doubling up making a three eighths inch thick hole into a three quarter inch thick hole and again we're going to after it's all epoxied nailed and epoxied and nailed we're going to flip it and put the chines or the ribs on the bottom for you know, st stability so we will be back with more from my paradise on have been tying island we got a new floor additional floor bye for now Here's all three. I'll give you a shot of all three. You've seen it before, but might as well end it with a shot of all three. Bye for now. All right, everybody. Right now, we got all three of the holes lined up for the permanent cross beam here. Uh, and again, when I say permanent, this particular, there's three beams. There's one here, uh, one for the center, and one for the other outer hull. So these will be permanently attached to the boat, each each hull. This this one will be attached to this hull, the center one will be attached to the center, and the other one, far one there, will be attached to that hull. And then uh, what we do is we add a, put another piece of wood all the way from here, all the way from here through to the center of the center hull and that's the removable one there and the same up front there and then from the center of the center hole all the way to the outer side of that is a second removable one and those will be bolted into here so that we can detach the holes from each other to put it on land to you know pick it up and carry it so anyway we've got these guys lined up pretty much and what we're doing we're, we're, we're marking actually we're marking right here so that when we uh, box in this here with the two by fours like we have down there, there, box all that, and everything lines up. We're not boxing it so it's crooked or too high or twisted or wh whatever. We're getting it uh, perfectly aligned so that everything works out. So we are going to start boxing this one in. And this is the back steps and stuff that we do it in. And we'll be back with more lining up the three holes. Yeah, see, this is uh, simulating the uh, the removable one, but it'll actually go from there all the way through here, across here, and, and then it'll be bolted like here and here and here and here, and then it'll go halfway to this center line, this little line here, and it'll be split. So there'll be two removable ones from there to there and then from here over to that out of it we'll just unbolt these and of course they'll bolt through here too uh, and we'll unbolt those when we want to take it out of the water so we will be back with more from my paradise on Bentayan Island we're bolting well we're not bolting up the holes we're still you know, we're still doing the you know, supports for the cross beams that's a major job we've got to cut a lot of wood a lot of angles a lot of notches a lot of grooves a lot of weird shapes to just everything fit in there real snug and uh, still give us wear hook room to slide the removable ones in and out so we will be back with more cross cross beams from my paradise on Italian island the Bye typical stuff we have to do to fit everything because <coughs> lumber here is not uh, meal cut uh, it's just random I mean you may get two by fours three and a half inches wide and you may get 
them uh, th th two and th uh, three and three fourths, maybe one and a half, one and five eighths, one and three eighths thick. You, you don't know. So the problem is when you build, you're building with all irregular size wood, and the sides here might not be at right angles to this. They may be like slanted. I, I mean, you don't know what. So. You're constantly having to make adjustments for all the irregularities of the wood here. And uh, so it kind of quadruples the amount of work it, that you do. You can't just cut a piece of wood and it fits. Everything has to be custom notched and measured. And, and then when you put it in, it needs another shave here and there and another hair. So anyway, this is what we do. <laughs> I've been doing for... I don't know how many days, but the thing is, see, we have to do the, the brace for this rear of this hole, the front of that hole, which is done, the front of this hole, which is not done, the front of that hole, which is done, the front of that, or the back of that hole, which is done, and the back of this hole, uh, which is not done yet. And, of course, we're back to the back of this one that we're working on right now. So we got nine, now we got six of these bracing things that we have to do and everything is custom I, I mean this boat even though it should be identical to that boat ain't because you know it's handmade so it's not going to be uh identical so we can't just cut two sets of that and use them here it just won't fit so uh everything uh, again has to be custom made so that's what we do for how many days have we been doing this and we got probably two or three more, <laughs> more days. I don't know how many, four, four days, three days, five days, something like that. And then, like I said, we haven't even done this one at all. Uh, however, yesterday we did add the extra three-eighths inch plywood in here to give it, beef it up the bottom of the hull for the diesel engine we're going to put in here. So these are already three-fourths inch thick because they already have two layers of three-eighths. The outer holes we built like that. This one, I bought the boat. Uh, from the guy that's also building these, these but one of the brothers uh, that's building these guys. But these are just uh, lightweight boats. You know, you could call it racing boat. Uh, but uh, so they're very lightweight, very thin. Everything is uh, save on materials and weight, so you can go faster. But I don't. Want, that's not my thing. <laughs> I'm building a trimaran. And so I need it kind of beefed up, especially these cross beams here, because that's just going to twist and just rip. I, mean, I don't know. It's, when the ocean comes at you, it's just uh, unimaginable how much force and power and stuff it takes. Uh, and especially if you're in rough, you know, sea. So everything's got to be super, super beefy. So we are getting super beefy. And we'll be back with more. In my paradise on Italian Island, beefing up the trimarans. Bye for now. Right, everybody, we finally got the two outer holes, all the bracing done here. This is kind of it on the side and underneath, and there's a lot of stuff under here that's all notched and grooved that you can't see, and I'm not going to take apart uh, until it's time to epoxy it. And then this front one here is the same thing. Uh, we got it all set up. It's all braced and everything. Well, these. These guys go here at the top and the bottom across there, and then a one by two goes set inside of here, and then another one by two goes flush on the outside, but it's a one piece. It goes all the way from here, all the way to the back, and then another one inside here and all the way to the front on that one. So this is all uh, beefed up. Three, three, basically three layers of plywood here. Uh, the one, the permanent beam goes across here and it bolts in through two, two by four. So basically bolts in through, stainless steel bolts are going to go through this and the permanent one and keep it in place. And nails and epoxy and all that stuff. The middle one we haven't done yet. That's where we're going to start uh, tomorrow. We're shutting down now. It's getting late in the day. And this one's done too. He's already uh, all formed up. And that kind of thing, that piece doesn't go, well, that piece goes under here, holding, there's a space there, but that's a spacer. And then all these are the other pieces that go across here. But this is basically the hole where the two, the permanent one that's bolted and nailed and glued and epoxy to this, these two, is the one at the front, and the one at the back is the one that's removable. 
and back here too same thing we've got it all braced up you can see we actually have one of the cross beams in in there the other one we're mocking up with just this little short piece of wood here but that's how it would go of course it would naturally extend all the way across to the center of the center hull so there's one piece that's removable from there going all the way across that bolts into these like this one's bolted and glued and epoxy and permanently attached to here that one is glued uh, epoxied uh, nailed and uh, bolted to that one and then uh, that one over there same thing permanently but the one in the front you see a little short one there that one will actually come from there all the way to the center of this hole here and be bolted into the permanent one so that is what we're doing right now we got it all uh, done and tomorrow we need to flip this guy upside down and put the uh, these little chines, you see these little drop down things right there and there and there. Those are ribs that run all the way to the front of the boat for, you know, stability and keep it from drifting or getting pushed sideways by currents and waves so it'll stay on course, basically, a straight course. And so we got to do that to this one here. And of course, we've already got it done here on this one. You can see the the three little chines or ribs here there 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 so we are getting it done i can't believe it those uh you know the ancient peruvians and the egyptians and all those folks that built all those rocks and things that fit perfectly well i use power tools <laughs> i can't fit anything perfectly i mean there's a little eighth inch gap or a sixteenth inch gap or whatever all kinds of stuff everywhere but that's what epoxy is for so i don't know if the uh, mayans or the incas or the peruvians or the egyptians had uh, epoxy and filled in those gaps with epoxy but that's what i'm doing because i'm not that good and i've got a ruler that goes down to 16th of an inch and you know power tools i mean skill saws and jigsaws and drills and planers and pretty much whatever you need to build a boat that with a power tool, sanders, uh, angle grinders, you, you know, every, everything, but I can't, I mean, epoxy saves my life. So, <laughs> remember that when if you're ever building a boat, if it don't fit, leave a little gap and you'll get some epoxy in there, and that's actually a stronger bond too, so not a bad thing, it's not like you're, you know, cheating or anything, it's just, uh, I'm trying to get a good shot of the boat, but... I can't get back far in enough. Maybe from this side. Let's try it here. So we get a good parting shot from this. So like I said, we're done for the day. Those are the boats. Rear to front to center. And we'll be back with more. Three cut trimaran for my paradise on Italian Island. Bye for now. Everybody, that is not an upside down video. That's an upside down haul. The world is still right side up. See these and this one, honey. This one is right side up. So the world didn't turn upside down, but the hull did. And the reason it's upside down is because, you know, we added another 3 8 inch piece of plywood inside of the bottom of this hull to strengthen it for the diesel engine. Well, when we do, obviously you have to nail it in there to get it to, you know, close down, close the gap between the original one and the next one and push all the epoxy kind of out the side so that you get a good bond so anyway so all the <laughs> nails stick through here this is like one of those uh bed of nails that you you know those uh, indian guys you know sleep on well <laughs> i've got to uh use an angle grinder and cut all these guys off which is what i've done here i just kind of started it right here where i'm cutting them off and then getting them uh, you, you know level you know so they don't stick out and then tomorrow we're going to put the chines on here so we're going to put uh, one by two uh, strips going down, down the center and then one basically going pretty close to where these nails are down this side and one down that side the side ones will be a little shorter than the front one the front one will probably come pretty far up 
up the bow. I don't know how far, but we'll see. They're 12 feet long, and this boat's 19 feet long, so we'll see how far that reaches. That sounds like about 7 feet short, but we can also uh, add on another one, just, you, you know, line them up and epoxy them together. And uh, so I'm going to finish uh, angle grinding these guys off. And of course, you know, we got all of the cross brace supports built for the two outside holes. They're finally uh, done. They're not assembled or epoxied or nailed yet, uh, but they're uh, cut and, um, you know, set in place. So it's nail time. So I'm going to go do this and we'll be back. Well, here, I'll, I'll actually let my wife uh, do the video and I'll show you how I actually do this. Pretty simple. So anyway, this is what's left of the bronze nails afterwards. They're just chopped off. But basically, I just take this guy and, you know, safety glasses because there's bronze filings flying everywhere and dirt and dust and epoxy and who knows what else, paint. basically it we just keep doing this until they're all gone and I'm making them very flush I would touch that but they're hot so these other ones but they're completely flush and then we're going to re epoxy this and repaint this uh, the, the entire boat so yeah all this will be re epoxied uh, so that you know obviously this is bare wood with a, a nail and I guess it could leak I don't think it will because there's epoxy between the, the flies uh, but anyway that's what we're going to do these guys are hot, so don't just grab them after you cut them. <laughs> they will burn your fingers. So we'll be back. I got uh, about 50 or 80 more to do. And we'll be back with more cut nails, bronze nails from a boat hole uh, from, my, uh, from my paradise on the Italian Island. We'll build a little trimaran today, tomorrow. And we have been for about three weeks, so bye for now. <laughs>